<clears throat> hey, what's up? We should be live. Um, as always, please let me know you can hear me well, you can see me well. I'm streaming a bit higher quality than usually, so this should be 1080p. I hope you'll enjoy it, so better than 720 than usual. Um, and I think today, I honestly, I have a bit of a headache. I'm a little under the weather, so it's been a few rough days, and today I woke up really tired. Uh, so I think what we'll do is maybe just jump kind of into the process itself. And I can, uh, while painting, kind of see what you're saying and interact. And then when we take a break between the layers, uh, we can do that. So for anyone who, we can talk more. Uh, so for anyone who's looking more for a stream that's less tons of talking and more kind of painting, maybe this will be a good one. Um, let me know you can hear me well again and... Uh, and see everything well. Hey Steve, hope you're doing well. Hey Marjorie, hope you'll be able to make it here. Uh, I'm using OBS, so it means I can't see your comments as easy, uh, but the quality should be better. Um, so let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let me know if there's any issues, if I'm talking to myself. Actually, I'm going to open it up for a second uh, on YouTube and listen to myself, uh, and let's see if I can hear myself. As long as I can hear myself, you should be able to hear me too. Hope everyone's doing well. I'm for one super happy that this week's over yeah good i hear myself okay a bit of background noise from the computer my apologies that's because it's working hard to stream at uh, 1080p so let me just make sure you can see everything yeah good so we have this beautiful mountainscape now uh, the drawing isn't going to be a major part of this process actually and let me rearrange the light a bit so it's stronger hot up light there we go the drawing isn't going to be that major of a part of this process. I'm going to focus much more on the painting stage and especially the temperatures. Okay, so we'll do that. I think it's also a good opportunity to experiment. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, very happy you could hear me well. And if you can just take a moment, everyone, and just drop a like on the video, it helps it reach more people. So, um, yeah, so we'll get started with the drawing. Now, there are a few important elements here uh, you have, and it's very interesting. So. A very common mistake is when you see this kind of a scene, you know that the trees are green and this background is kind of green, but the thing that's very easy to miss is notice just how much bluer the trees in the background are compared to the trees in the front. And that's a beautiful play of temperatures and it will give us an opportunity to help um, maybe push back on the big piece of background simply by using a cooler temperature, okay? Now, I don't necessarily aim for too much exaggeration here, but I, I may end up doing that, so you will excuse me. One more thing, it is more of a uh, horizontal scene, so I'll try kind of squeezing it a bit, right? Um, so for the, let's start with the biggest layer, which is our background, kind of cooler uh, area. If you look at the trees there at the far back, they're blue. It's so crazy to think about it, but they're actually blue. So this goes here, it's kind of, it's above the middle for sure. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a third, so somewhere around here. And it gets to a point, uh, not in the center, but a little to the left of the center, and then it goes to a secondary peak somewhere around here. So these are the th three main points I see on that ridge in the background. So if I just connect them very gently, and then we'll continue with this shape here. Continue like that, go back to that second peak, and we got the main part there. And then, and again, look, I'm working from large to small. So large shape first, shapes first, then dropping in the details, okay? And you let me know where you're from, what time it is, and I'll, I'll give you a shout out as soon as I'm done with this uh, stage of drawing, okay? So then we have a bit of a mountain ridge showing in the background. In fact, let me make it a little lower hanging just to convey that it's a little more in the background. So maybe around here instead, okay? That can be important, and I will try and erase, because once I put in the wash over it or the sky, it will be impossible to erase. Then we have another kind of secondary ridge there in the far background. I'm gonna flatten this side a bit to have a stronger angle there. Sorry for the ambulance. Hopefully that's not too bad. And then you see we have that communication tower. What is that? Somewhere up top. We can decide to get rid of it later on. Actually, I'm not gonna draw it in case we don't want to include it, okay? So that pretty much finishes the top part. Now as for the bottom, right close to the bottom we have this beautiful diagonal. It goes like that. 
And then on top of that, we have two, two, two groups of trees. So one, I'm not gonna have it intersect with the side, so I'm gonna move it a little inside. And then the peak, I don't want it to meet here actually. So how are we gonna do this? Let's do it like this, and let's have the peak going above, like that. So look at what I'm doing here. This is all composition, how to improve it, just a tiny bit. In fact, I'm gonna stretch this like that, the background so that we don't have too much of an intersection of shapes there. And then the tree comes on top of this. And then in fact, let me go ahead and get rid of some of these lines. Let me check in, uh, we just have one more and then I'll, I'll, I'll check it on the chat. And then we have this other group of trees that's not gonna be nowhere near as tall because it's downhill. Um, and we'll avoid the center with that as well. But to break off the monotony, it's not gonna, gonna be just one tree like that. I'm gonna have all three of them as they show in the original reference photo, okay? So we get something like this. I think that works well. You could make it more interesting by making this one maybe lower hanging and then have this one like that. So let's see what we get here. Like that. Okay, I know it's a bit hard maybe to see. Sorry about that. Um, these, these are very light lines, okay? Uh, so let me see what you're saying in the chat for a second. Thank you, Steve, for being here. Hey, Allison. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, I had a major headache earlier. Really terrible. Um, the sciences rule. Hi, Ron. I was very disappointed. I missed the lovely horses. Yeah, happy you, uh, you, you're you here today. And also, hopefully, you watched it after the fact. Live, when it's not live, it's not the same, I know. Hey, Megan, how are you? I uh, hope you're doing well. Hey, Rolf. Hey, Christine, how are you doing? Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm happy we got the pop back too. That was a big, big, oof, a big headache. But now he's safe. That's the most important part. Let me make this smaller. Now, we'll go back to the process. So, and then I'll see some more messages. Uh, remember how I said large to small, right? So now we can start working on the smaller shapes. So what are the smaller shapes within the shapes? We have on this mountain ridge here, for the farther ones, I'm not gonna put anything because they're really light. But for this one right here, we have a lot of these groups of trees. So let's get those in. Um, <coughs> and of course I squeezed things a bit. <coughs> so we'll do our best just to kind of nail the overall feel. So we have a few trees here near the edge of the mountain and then they kind of wrap around it. And that's a really nice, actually let's get their overall shape in first and then we'll start putting in the actual trees. Um, in a way, this scene is quite a challenge, so I'm, I'm bracing myself for not an easy road, okay? I'm, I'm not exactly sure what to expect here, um, so we're going to take it easy. <laughs> we're going to treat this as kind of a study experimentation. Sometimes these paintings produce the best results, very often they don't, so uh, you see, that's not, that's not a scene I approach very confidently. I'm not like, oh, I know what to do exactly and I know how to paint it. That's a scene I need to kind of think about while I paint and really be focused uh, and figure out how I'm gonna do things. Okay, that's very common. I'll, I, I do a lot of paintings where that's the case. Uh, I think that's how you grow. Uh, so here are a bunch of trees and then it kind of connects and we have this just kind of shape. And then this goes around like this. So here, and then there's a bunch of separate trees. So you wanna get all of those in as well kind of get a hint for yourself as to the edge and what it's gonna look like okay and then we have a bunch of other trees and I do want to include these roads I think they look really really nice we're gonna draw an indication for them like this it's been a while since I drew on a live usually I'll just draw an advanced trace um, this is a faster drawing so I'm like yeah I'll, I'll just do it live road here there's a house there there's a bit of a road going through here leading all the way to the top a lot of trees there at the top don't forget the edge here showing the trees wrapping around here and of course there are some gaps right this isn't this isn't the perfect shape and there are a lot of holes in it uh, where there aren't any trees so we'll get those in real time uh, i can kind of get those while I paint but I just wanted to put a basic indication for the placement of everything 
and then this is another group of trees like that and I think that's pretty much everything we need as for the trees that are close, let me indicate a bit of a shape on them, just a pattern. They're going to go kind of like this. This is one tree. There's actually two or three there, but I just drew it as one. And I kind of want to get the pattern of light and shadow there, just to realize once I paint, just so that I know how to approach it. These are a little thinner and a little more... There are more gaps between the leaves here, so something to pay attention to. But I don't need much more than that. This is actually ready to paint. So let me see here. Yeah, that looks good. That looks good. We can work with that. Um, so let's see uh, who is in the house. Marjorie says 9 uh, and 7 minutes a.m. here. May you feel very well soon. Thank you. Soldiering through, not feeling well in the pits. Yeah. Uh, hey, Marina, how are you? Hope you're doing well. Um, hey, Patty. Hey, Rolf. I don't know why your messages get retracted, so if you can send them again. Uh, hey, John, how are you? Hey, uh, Chen Sun Chu, hello from uh, Taiwan. Thank you for being here. Hey, Penny uh, from Pendergrass. Uh, thank you for being here. Joyce here as well. Uh, good morning. Hey, Joaquin, or oh, Joaquin, sorry. I never know how to pronounce it from Mexico. Uh, Lana is here. Cindy is here. Uh, NC, uh, Kate and Hallie, hello from India. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, yeah, we're jumping straight into this one. Uh, hello, Artfelt Creations, how are you doing? Uh, hope everything is well. So I'm going to jump into the first wash here, I think. Um, honestly, I'm not sure exactly how I will approach it. As I, as I look at this, and I'm going to open up, I have a black and white image as well, just uh, on the in the background, I can open it up for you as well. Uh, I'm not really sure how I'll approach this, so we'll take it step by step. Let me bring in uh, the black and white reference here for you. It's a, it's at a bit of an angle. I don't like this angle. Let me try and fix that. I think I'll need to move it in order to fix it. And then we'll call this Mountain 2. And we'll bring the black and white picture and make it smaller because it's going to open up huge, of course. And let's make both of these a little smaller. Like this. And this one. Like that. So you can see with the black and white image, um, it's very interesting. So. It's not too dark. Nothing here is too dark except for some shadows on the closer trees. Now look at the difference in black and white between the foreground and the background. So the background is obviously lighter, but it's not that big of a difference. We have a very light sky, then slightly darker mountains here, slightly darker mountains here, and slightly darker foreground. Right? The, the floor ground on the foreground is actually not even it's, it's as light as the background here. So it's kind of similar. Uh, so just one more thing to pay attention to, okay? Um, so the question is, how do we want to start it oh, uh, in terms of the first wash? Um, there are a few possibilities. You can do a wash that just for the sky and some clouds wet and wet. Um, <coughs> or you can continue that wash all the way down to the bottom and kind of maybe use warm colors um, that I can later mask on with some cooler colors for the background, which I think is what I'll do, okay? So I'm going to use my uh, large Lebensen brush. As always, if you want to check these out, Lebensen brushes is the large uh, goat hair. Fantastic brush. Um, why is it, it? It looks a little dark, right? Or maybe it's my computer. Yeah, okay, it's my computer. It's good. Um, so and I'll, I'll just get started here. We'll mix something. Hopefully you can see my mixing area as well. I think you can. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to mix kind of a... Um, grayish color for the sky. I'm going to use French Ultramarine mainly, a bit of Perlin Red, and a bit of um, Indian Yellow in this case. And we'll just slowly build up this nice little gray color here. You have to sometimes be very patient when mixing, so brace. Um, and this looks a little green, so we'll add a bit of red. And there we go, we got kind of a gray. Now to make it blue, we'll add a bit of blue there. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with a very pale watery wash that is quite gray, okay? And what I think we'll do is we'll, we'll 
pour in the blue into that, okay? So let's see how that goes. Now we can grab a bit of blue and start kind of pouring it in. May give us a bit of a moody kind of feel, that's fine. Like that, let me see if we can see it well. Yeah, you can see it well. Um, like this, now, don't forget, this is gonna dry much, much lighter. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna continue these washes. I'm gonna continue with the blue down to the mountains in the background. And actually I can continue with this blue for all of the foreground actually, for all the background. Because it's gonna be uh, pretty, pretty cool compared to the foreground here. The only issue is I don't wanna cover the foreground with too much coolness. Now look at what we have up top. The sky is beginning to dry. So, see this, the sheen? We can actually start working wet and wet to get those clouds in. We don't even have to, honestly. I like the sky like this, but let's challenge ourselves here to get it to look like, like the photo in a way, or to have some more of the photo in it. I'm gonna mix this kind of a neutral blue, and let's see what we get if I just do this. So this is a little too light. I know it may be surprising, it should be stronger. I'm gonna put a few of these lines in and kind of see what they do. Let's play around with the angle. I don't want it to move as much. And then let's grab a bit of a stronger paint. And we'll do this for the farther background. And you see, I have to use very strong paint, stronger than you think you should. Again, because the, the paint will spread out due to the wetness. And if the timing is too early, like it may be now, but that's fine. Maybe too, that's way too green, you see there. That's, that's better. I know it looks black, but don't worry, it's gonna dry a little lighter. So that's good, that's something we can work with, but we have to remember, we don't want our general wash to dry, so. We'll continue with that. I'm gonna add a bit of warmth to this entire thing. Sorry if I move the camera constantly, my bad. Add a bit of warmth into that and we will proceed as usual. So some of it may have uh, started to dry, but that's fine. It's not fully dry, so we can actually work with that. Now, I will add a bit of May Green here as a first wash because some of those greens in the background are really shiny and nice. So I wanna get that feel in there. Uh, I'm gonna let myself be a little more expressive perhaps on this wash. Now ideally you could skip some of the roads here. I'll add them I think later on. I don't wanna compromise my wash here. You see you get a nice little gradual transition there. So the closer we are, let me continue to warm things up just a bit. And as we move down, I'm gonna continue with kind of the same green from earlier. So my colors are three primaries and that may green mostly. And we'll let that dry, see that white spot there? That's, you don't wanna to touch anything there because it's started to dry, let me show you. It's not that wet, so you don't wanna mess with that. So it looks a little strange, don't worry. Once it dries and we'll start darkening the foreground, things will fall into uh, the right context, okay? Um, so we'll give it a few more moments to dry naturally. And in the meantime, I'm gonna look at some of your uh, messages. So we were in Uh, Nora, hey from Sweden, how are you? So it's 3.15 um, afternoon. Hey Rolf, finally you're able uh, to, to send a message. The photo has indeed some distance, uh, much green. Will be dif difficult to paint regarding uh, to the light. It could be from near where I live in Norway. Not so much green as this time of year. Let me actually check where that picture is from. And hey Kelvin, I hope you're doing well. Uh, so I think I actually closed that window, but uh, maybe in the name of the photo. No, it doesn't say where it's from. My apologies. Um, but yeah, let me bring it up a bit. 
Let's see what else we have here. Calvin says, hi, Leron. Finally got some time to watch your stream. Thank you for being here. Hey, Petra. If you have any questions in the meantime, feel free to ask. So the thing that, that I had to think about while painting this first wash was mainly how do I paint everything in a smooth way that will preserve um, some warmth in the foreground because these greens are pretty, you know, they're dark. So we have a lot of room to darken them and, and get them to look warmer than the background, right? Uh, but still, I wanted to make sure that, that it is like it doesn't, I'm trying to isolate some colors here, that it actually does preserve some, um, some warmth. Yeah, so we have a lot of greens and a lot of blues there in the background, and all of them are a little darker uh, than the sky. Um, these mountains here are actually just slightly darker than the sky, and there's a bit of strong blue in them. That I love due to aerial perspective. It's really blue. Some some of their sections and shadows are very blue. I'll need to think about how to incorporate that. In fact, while this dries, I'm going to add a bit of my uh, manganese blue hue onto this uh, uh, well there because I'm running low. And this paint is best used straight out from the tube because it hardens quite a bit and it's a bit hard to reawaken sometimes. It's a beautiful color. It just takes a bit of water to wake up. <laughs> and again, if you have any questions in the meantime, ask me. So basically, just to talk a bit about the pop the story from yesterday, two days ago, uh, the, uh, they brought us a foster dog that was basically abandoned at the age of five. That's a nightmare. Like he was with his family from t the time he was about a month year, a, mo a month, month year, a month old, one month old. <clears throat> and then they put him in the dog shelter. Shelter, right? The place where after a week, they'll put him down. We saw it on Facebook and we, we wanted to take him in. He actually looks quite like Ruth in a way. They have a similar build. Um, let me switch over to the, this colorful picture. So he has the same build as Ruth and we, we just felt really bad. So we decided to take him in. And then the, the moment he got here, we went up the building and he just ran down. And I don't know how he escaped the building because the door, the door was closed, but there's a, there are holes in the side of the building. like weird walls like that that Ruth can't go through he could he got out and that started a whole saga of seven hours of running after him in the city all around having people with scooters and bikes trying to help him running through junctions it was a complete nightmare that was two days ago yesterday he managed to wiggle his way out from the harness we had no idea that's possible and he did the same thing but he was caught really fast like after 15 minutes, something like that. So it was two very nightmarish days in that way. Um, so we're both very tired. Ruth is tired too. She doesn't like other dogs anyway, so like. Um, so yeah, this is why we're super tired. My legs hurt. It's, it's, it's really, really bad. Um, so yeah, I'll need this weekend to just stare at a wall and think about nothing. Um, yesterday's highlight for me was like doing the, the Japanese lesson with my teacher. That was like the most fun in terms of just sitting down and doing something that doesn't doesn't require being worried for a little dog's life. Um, he's doing really well. I posted a picture on Instagram too and on Facebook. He's really cute. He has such a good soul. I know I said I wouldn't talk much, but. I'm going to dry this in just a second with a hairdryer, but he has such a good soul, this dog. You can see in his eyes, he's, he has zero aggression. Like when he was running away, you know, when, when animals are cornered, he wasn't aggressive. He was just running. He was, he, and you, you, you pet him everywhere and he's so cute. He's so, it, it's still not his natural behavior because he's still very scared of the environment. So he's pretty reserved, but he has such a good soul. Really is such a good boy. Um, so yeah, let me mute myself for a second. Uh, dry this we'll be back
So in my desire to um, go strong enough on the clouds, I went too dark. Of course, uh, so that's fine, no worries. The rest will put it in the right context, but still it's a bit too dark. Uh, so my mess up. It should be about half the, the darkness. So the last, last few touches were too much. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, so where were we in the messages oh yeah consistency thickness of the paint mix hey steve uh is asking when to use in various wetness stages <coughs> yeah and so don't take my example in this case i went too dark uh rafael hello from catalonia oh beautiful place uh you can find lots of landscapes like that cool cool the run is a kind of <laughs> oh i know it i know it i know it from my time in in Peru and Bolivia, everyone told me Liron is like a little mouse that jumps on his hind legs. I saw pictures, it's so funny. Uh, Sergio says, uh, greetings Liron and everyone present. Hey, Michelle or Mikel, sorry. What is your favorite watercolor paper? Uh, Saunders Waterford, because it's the best. It's the most comfortable and fun to use. Um, it's, it doesn't stink like arch. Kanchan and Diren says, hello Liron, just wondering how your pencil sketch is not bleeding when you apply water, because I'm using a mid, like an HB pencil. If you use a B pencil, it may spread out a little more. I hope that makes sense. Also the cold press paper, I think helps. Uh, Sergio says, I'm curious about that too. Okay, good, we answered Rolf. As I, as I look at your painting while uh, drawing, drawing, what about some fog over the mountains in the background could be done and how? Yeah, that's a good question. It's a good question. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll take it step by step. Uh, Kanchan says, wow, very spirited pup, keeping you on your toes. Definitely. Ah, the science is rule. Uh, poor pup. Yeah, yeah, it's honestly, thank you so much, John. It's honestly a miracle. It's a double miracle. Two days ago and yesterday. I, I really don't know what else to say. It's too bad that Ruth still hasn't and probably will not open up to him because uh, he's uh, her size and she doesn't like that she's, she was okay with the puppy um, with uh, Bambi Bok Choi Bush <laughs> she was okay with him but um, not so much here let me isolate some colors here so this is funny enough it's very purpley when I look at the mountains in the background there are very muted purpley colors so I'm gonna grab a bit of my same blue and um, a bit of red. I know, like, I'm not, I'm not in the in the mindset of producing something good today. I don't think, at least. Um, so I'm not even gonna try. I'm just gonna roll with the punches because I'm I'm too tired to to produce something great. So you'll have to forgive me. Um, but I will do my best to entertain. So this is our mountain in the background, like this. It's very rocky. And it's still quite light, so I just have to make sure that it's light enough. So let me bring in a bit of water as well. We obviously we changed its shape to just complement better our mountain in the foreground. And I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush, and I'm gonna apply a bit of this blue. Actually, I'm gonna take it straight from the well or pan and just put it in like this. You see, there is a bit of that blue there, kind of hinted at. And you could blend some edges here, but actually, you know, I feel good about them. Let's keep them as is. And then we have this other ridge here in the background, goes up like this. Make sure it's watery enough. And of course, we made this tree taller. So we're, we're actually, let's paint over it. Let's paint over it like that. Move down all the way here. And then what we can do is the same. We're going to inject some stronger blues. Not stronger in terms of value. Stronger in terms of saturation. So just more saturated blues here to the sides of this ridge. Hopefully that will kind of make it interesting. Uh, and here I will blend some edges. I'm really out of shape. Haven't painted for a few days, obviously. <laughs> Haven't done much for a few days. Uh, which brings us to uh, this wash, the main wash. Now, this is funny enough, composed of blues that are still quite muted um, and of greens. Um, so while this kind of starts to dry, we'll, we'll talk strategy. So we have these areas where the trees are, which I sometimes like to go over just to kind of hint to for myself where that area is. 
so that I, it's easy for me to orient myself in the painting. So you see that's dark. There's a lot of it up top here. So that's our darker trees, right? So these are going to be a muted blue, and not too dark, but still darker than the background and pretty close to value to these trees. And then this is going to be green. So the way we can do this, and I think I will, is to do a base wash of green, avoiding the highlights for the road and all of that. And then I'll do wet and wet for those groups of trees. Bit of a risky move. I could honestly just go for it um, and just start top to bottom and shift my colors. I think that's what I'm going to do. You know what? I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with the blue, move to the green, go back to the blue, and kind of paint it in one go in sections. I think that's what I'll, I want to do here. And so what I'm going to need is quite a bit of both. So let's mix here. Let's get a bit of green going. Now, of course, it's not as bright, so I'm going to add a bit of the red to it. That'll neutralize it down. It's the same red I used for my other sections, so it's, it should work in terms of harmony. So that's that. And in another well, in another well, I'm going to start mixing my neutral blues. Mm -hmm. So let's see what we got here. I love how dominant the red and yellow are it's pretty <laughs> incredible actually how they overpower the blue so easily so you see that's too green we'll need it more blue and actually more gray so a bit more red that that's kind of close to what we need for the yeah that's it needs to be way more blue i'm under the illusion myself more blue um much more blue actually both of these blues it's not the same at all there's a strong optical illusion going on here that I need to make sure I address in my own brain that's way too green I fall for these traps just as easily as anyone um, so blue 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 that's a little closer I'm just trying to isolate the color in front of me. Yeah, that's not it. Let me retry. Let's just grab a bunch of blue. It's not the ideal comparison here because I'm looking at my screen. Mm. And at my palette. Oh, they think that's pretty close. I don't want to open up Photoshop because that will greatly slow down the computer. Actually, you know what? You know what, I think there's a bit of, huh, I think there's a hint of purple in that. Sometimes some colors are just tricky. I'm gonna, I'm gonna repaint this after the fact because I don't want to mess up the computer now. You know what, I'm gonna do it. I want to, I want to see this color isolated. Let me just check for a second. I'm really curious to see what these like right here, all of these greens for the trees are. It's not greens, of course, it's blues, but I can't see the color cleanly. So let me just for a second try and see it clearly. We're all <laughs> victims to optical illusions. So let me isolate that color digitally in Photoshop. Okay. Yeah, so it's kind of a, hmm, it's interesting. What is that? Honestly, I don't know. It's kind of a... Um, Payne's gray in a way. It's actually really close to Payne's gray. Yeah, I think I'll use Payne's gray for that. The ultramarine doesn't bring doesn't bring me where I want to get. So it's actually easier. So we're gonna bring some uh, Payne's gray into it. And uh, the May green from earlier. Actually, let me check that. Let me sample the May green. I know you can't see it. My apologies. It's just not that interesting because you'll see me mix it on the palette. Yeah, so that's a very muted green. That's a muted brown. Okay, we're good to go. Yeah, okay, I think I got it. And if you want me to show you the dog, I can do that. I have some pictures of him. His name is Ketem, which actually means like a shape or a stain in Hebrew because he has this shape on his back. It's actually a cute name for a family that decided to abandon him at the age of five. 
Nice naming process, just a shame what happened next. So I'll grab a bit of that paint's grain and we'll get started. <laughs> Starting from the top of those mountains. Why can't I find it? There we go. I'm gonna close Photoshop. Sorry for all the preparation, it's just, it is important to get it right. I'm gonna need a much smaller brush for this section. So there's tons of these smaller trees up top there. And for once, I am gonna try and put in some details. I'm not gonna just put them in a, as a big shape. I'm gonna actually render some of them. And try to somewhat follow the shape I see there. Now this ha actually has to be a little dark, so I'm gonna grab a bit more of that pins gray. Feed into the shapes I put, kind of messing them up in the process. <laughs> That's fine. And then let's switch over and meet that paint's gray with a bit of green. Now let's see how that works. So you see, it's gonna flow, of course, which is fine. And I do want to leave this bit of a highlight there for the road that I drew earlier. So that's gonna be probably around here. Like that. And this road will actually allow us to stop here, which is always fun. There, you can kind of rest, right? And actually, let's take a moment to flesh out the trees while we can. So I'm having two brushes here, one with the phthalo blue and another one for the green. I'm going to have to later on uh, get another brush for the, um, for the blue that's larger, probably. Right now, I can still use this small brush. A few trees next to the road here and there. And then we can start working on that section underneath paint so that we leave the road a little lighter, see? Now we've opened up quite a big shape, so we need to work a little fast here. So let's see how we can do that. I'm gonna get some more of that beautiful paint's gray. And start painting those trees. And the farther it, we are, the more sense it makes to use um, this very wet mix. Um, I have these very smooth, but the closer we get, we'll actually want to all use this brush. I'm going to take a risk and use this big brush. Um, the more we want to separate the trees from the uh, foliage and actually have them as sharp shapes, right? Just something to have in mind. And this tree will provide a nice little stopping spot for us as well. Like this. And continue off the other side while it's still wet. Start bringing in those beautiful blues. And we gotta fill in the greens in between. So we're really multitasking here. And worst case, we can go back over it and bring uh, back some of the things we missed. But for now, you see, I really want to build this up carefully. This is the green part. And then actually, let me let me just switch over to blue with the same brush because the blue is so dominant here anyway. And this brush is really comfortable for that kind of a wash. So this wraps around the mountain ridge here. Let me make sure you can see everything. Yeah, good, we're good. So this wraps around. I'm gonna add a bit more of that blue there. I went a little too strong on the phthalo, of course. <laughs> and while this is still wet, this border here, I'm gonna continue working with it, okay? Now look at what happens here. This starts to really fade away, so we're gonna strengthen it a bit. Just go over all of these again. It is wet and wet, but it's starting to dry, so we'll get a better shape and one that lasts more. And I actually like that this blended a bit. Um, it's so unclear and it's so in the background that you don't need to see too many of these trees to understand that they're trees. 
This I do want to strengthen a bit like that. I have to pick up the pace a bit, even though I don't, I'm not fully happy about it, but that's fine. And let's get rid of this small thin strip of green right in the edge here like that because it then disappears for the blue to come back for the trees and look at what happens here we get to the edge of this shape and then we'll go back to green right and luckily for us we have this tree here in the middle that can kind of provide us a way to stop and then we'll we'll put it over with much darker values so it will make sense and hopefully that's cool enough uh, if I didn't mess it up too badly. If I have, it's not going to be cool enough, and then I'll have to either cool down the background or warm up the foreground. That's a possibility as well. Bottom part here. Let's add a bit of ultramarine just to get some more color in. Just put a big chunk of manganese and um, let's stop here for a moment go back to green see that's the, the technique I decided to use and it's not an easy one necessarily but there we go a bit of green there these white gaps gotta get rid of them and I'm gonna finish this section off uh, fast I'll just paint around the road here at this stage I'm like let's cover up everything that's green real fast leave a few highlights along the way and then come back for the darker trees it's much better because we gotta we gotta finish this section up and we can switch over to the other brush and again worst case we'll go over some of the darker sections again but let's Kind of wrap up this stage here. This brush has really good water capacity. That could actually be to our detriment here. Mm. I'm gonna get a bit of neutral tint too to darken it a little easier because we need a, a lot of strength here. You see, there's no way I can stop in the middle of this wash. It's gonna be a complete disaster. I think I bit off more than I can chew. That's fine. That happens. Next time I'll know to maybe separate this stage to a few sections, right? But in any case, we're going to continue this blue all the way to the bottom here. Because that's going to meet our front section. And then we have again this kind of a more um, paints gray kind of color. And again, these areas, the empty ones are for the trees. We're going to put them later on. They'll make a bit more sense, so don't worry about that. This is going to create a really nice intersection with the front of this wash. Hopefully that makes sense. I don't know. Told you I'm very doubtful for today's painting. We'll see. Good. I think that'll work. Now we need to mix a light, kind of bluish, neutral color for this left section. Because here there's just trees, so you don't need to do any crazy stuff with the blues. So let's let this dry for a few more moments. Once I'll add the trees in the front, I can go back and sharpen up some trees in the back, add a few small details, bring some details out. Uh, I can actually also darken the foreground a bit. We'll use my Indian yellow, May green, and kind of darken it up a bit. One brush mark. And maybe get a few rocks or details there, just for later, to add some interest. There we go, let's let it dry. This was one heck of a wash. 
So let's continue reading. Um, where were we? Okay, not too many comments. That's good. Uh, Sajeev is here. Hey, how are you doing? Kelvin, I often find it difficult to mix blue-green without turning the mixture into blue completely. Interesting. I have a problem maybe without turning it into green. Interesting. Nora, love your style. Thank you so much. Kanchan looks good. How about alternating between paints gray and perlin green? Perlin green. Hmm. I don't think perlin green would give me what I want here, but it could be an option. Uh, oh, for the darks. Um, hmm. Not sure. Could work. Maybe. Uh, Lete Gomez says hello from Spain, and Melanie says good morning. Good morning. Hey, Christine, thank you so much for the super chat for your dog rescue at your uh, big, big heart. Thank you so, so much, Christine. I really appreciate it. It's been two crazy days. I cannot even begin to describe it. It's just insanity. I'm going to actually turn on the lights for the dogs. One second. Let me limp my way out of here for a moment. Poor doggo sitting on the couch, just chilling. Thank you so, so much, Christine. I really appreciate it. Uh, Brit Hart art is beautiful. You make this look easy. Thank you so much. A.A. Uh, a. Hudson, Prussian blue works well for evergreens, in my opinion. Yeah, um, definitely. I should get some. Prussian blue would have worked here nicely, I think. Now that I look at it in the small frame, it actually looks quite nice. You are right about a touch of green. You're actually right. It's easier to, to see it now for me too. So this could benefit from, from a bit of green in it. Let me try and mix that real quick and see if I can hit it. Um, it's always easy for me to see after the fact, but just out of interest. Let's see here. And then um, Melanie asks, how do you stay motivated to paint? I picked it up during quarantine but I feel like I haven't touched my paints in months now um, so he here's a weird take I think you shouldn't force it um, if you don't feel like it maybe it's not the right timing maybe you need to spend time doing other things what I would be curious is are you feeling like you really want to and then you kind of stop yourself from doing that or you just feel like you need to do it and you don't like does it feel like it does it weigh on you do you feel like you need to or you have to paint even if you know on a logical level that it will do good it still can feel like a chore so i'm curious to hear if it feels like a chore um if it does feel like a chore it could be a chore in your mind and then you know maybe you need to take some time away even though you took some time away you know um Daiji, hello, 30 minutes in and you've done a lot of painting. Yeah, but you didn't miss the front, so that's most important, the far room. Thank you so much for being here, my friend. Uh, Svetlana uh, Huma, um, Homutova, hello from Moscow. Thank you for your lessons. What do you like to paint without references? I don't really paint a lot without references. Um, so it's funny, when I paint without a reference, I'll usually just kind of paint abstract stuff. Abstract shapes, um, smooth washes with gradual transitions i will go from yellow to red from blue to green from all sorts of things like that that's what i care about more um, so i don't know if that answers your question but yeah that's kind of my mode uh when i when i just paint without a reference um yeah so let's do this i'm going to start putting in the dark trees and then we'll revert back and work a bit more about the background there's a lot we can do here we can darken a lot and we can bring out a lot of the, of the details in the trees. Actually, I don't want to darken the trees. I want to darken the other sections a bit. Hmm. Should I? I don't know. Maybe a bit. Maybe a bit. We'll, we'll go over the lighter parts of the background. Maybe it'll help. By the way, is the quality better? I don't know. Is it 1080p really? Let me check. I haven't checked myself. Hopefully it, it, it looks better than usual. It does, because of our connection, it's better now than uh, I can afford to do that. Question is, does it play smoothly too? So let me see here. Looks like it plays smoothly and it is 1080. Good. Good, good, good. I think it works well, actually. Okay, let's get going with uh, the smaller closer sorry trees for these 
I'm gonna actually use some phthalo green here, I think, because it's an easy way to make some darks. Uh, let's add some May green to that. Let's add some French ultramarine. And I said some fatal blue. I, I'm just trying to figure out like what will be a good base for them. I feel like I'm gonna mess them up. Um, but we'll mess them up with some grace, I guess. Let's see what this looks like. So I'll just try and we'll see how that goes. It's funny, the foreground trees shouldn't be much darker than the background, so I'm trying to really pace myself and I'm also wanting to get rid of the white gaps there so I'll, I'll cover them up with some darks and we'll see if that kind of drops things into the right context or not and that looks good I think Now while I'm at it, we can start feeding some uh, wet and wet darks. So I'll, I'll just use almost black. I know it looks super dark already, but you can actually go darker, as you can see now, hopefully. Yeah. Bit of a weird color mix, actually, but I'm gonna add a bit of yellow too. But I think it looks interesting, so yeah. We'll close the gaps um, when we go over the background again with another wash. So the tree's shapes here is a bit tricky, actually, um, because there's the, there's the branches and the gaps between them that have shadows in them. So it's a weird pattern of light and shadow with lots of dots of darkness in kind of in between or it's a bit hard to describe but all the branches are coming in all directions and in between them there are some shadows so oh, that makes sense a bit of a weird pattern to work with actually but I think it worked out okay so far yeah that's good I think that's decent let's get a branch here And let's tighten up some of the shadows on it. The headache's now a lot better. It was so bad earlier. It was like really pounding. Let me see this in the camera. Yeah, that looks nice. It's, it's a little too dark, but I feel good about it. I can actually spray a bit of water on it and give it a bit of lightness. And one more thing, because I did feel like it, it misses a bit of warmth. I'm gonna add a bit of yellow on top of that, just here and there. Let's see if I can get that yellow to fit in and lighten things up a bit here and there. It's obviously gonna still dry lighter. So don't worry about that too much. But it did feel like it's missing some warmth, so maybe a bit of lemon yellow too, just to make it pop a little more. There we go. Yeah, that looks interesting, actually. The edges of the branches, they, they have this lightness to them. That's the role that this yellow can play. And of course, it's going to melt away most of it, so you won't see a lot of it, but I think that looks good. That's a nice trick. Um, so yeah, we'll let that dry for a bit. Definitely not like the reference photo, uh, but yeah. Had no, not too many expectations, a bit of a tiring day. Um, let's see. Uh, Beverly says hello from Salmon Arm, British Columbia. Time here is 6.49 a.m. Wow, okay, it's early. Uh, Melanie, I'm still learning. Uh, so here and there it feels like a chore, but probably most of the time spent working and being tired makes it difficult. Yeah. If you can prioritize it, before other things schedule wise I would do that so if your schedule allows you to first do something else just first paint then do the rest um, that can help 
So it's like this concept of starting the day with the thing that scares you the most or it's kind of bugging you the most. So in this case, it's prioritizing something that is really important to your soul. Um, so I'd consider that actually. Um, a lot of it is schedule. So if you can really get up earlier, start painting, and then even go to bed earlier. I know that's not an option for many people, but just saying, just giving it as a uh, proposal. Uh, let me know what you think. Brit Hart, Melanie, I love to just pick up my brush and start painting. Uh, that gets me. Yeah, that works for me too, but it's not for everyone, I know. Uh, Gail Truscott, late to the party. Hi from Ontario. I love uh, the dog of Ruth. Yeah, Ruth is, she's, she went to the bedroom, I think. <laughs> Um, Monica, good morning. Hey, Rolf. Photo indicates a bright day. A problem for me is often where be where the light from the sun hits the landscape. In this case, in the middle of the painting to clearly show the skill. Yeah, the, the green green really tends to show the light, and that's something I, I have problems with too. Um, Reuven, that's my dad. <laughs> Either all your paintings are so appealing, I always wish to enter the frame. Thank you so much. I, I was I read that at first appalling. I was like, oh, <laughs> that's not good. But yeah, thank you, thank you so so much. Um, my dad's here actually frequently in the live streams. So thank you for being here. My sister too sometimes joins. A. A. Hudson says yes. Thank you, Kanchan. That tree looks so good. Loving the shadow on there. Thank you, Melanie. Yeah, that makes sense. A. Hey, Hudson, you inspired me to keep a daily watercolor journal. Thanks for that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm happy to help. Thank you so much. Yeah, the, the colors I chose here bug me a lot. So I'm going to try and fix that. We'll see. We'll see if I can. This needs to be more yellow. More light green. Now I'm just going to be a little... Um, what's the word for it? Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Childish, immature, and try to push it to be a little warmer. Because now I look at it, it really bugs me. So let's see if I can do that. It's going to turn into another experimentation. Another therapy experimentation for me instead of like painting something properly. Uh, but yeah. What can you do? Sometimes I, I get to paint a lot and then I feel really on top of things. Plus also I kind of knew that this is going to be a bit of a challenge. I knew this process isn't going to be the easiest. Maybe a bit of this green too. Um, so that's to be expected, really. Um, and I don't want to just, you know, choose paintings that are low-hanging fruits. I want to go for things that challenge me, you know. So yeah, let's get the other trees uh, going. Let me maybe try and mix first, and we'll see what we get. So it's kind of a... Um, let's see. Yeah, that's actually close. I just need a darker. Yeah, I think we're good. So a bit more of that same green in there. And then maybe I'll darken it with th that mix that has some red in it. That can be interesting. So let's see here. Now I have to solve the problem of these white gaps. Because I left some room around the trees that's a little too much. So let's see what we can do about that. Let's do this. That's like this painting has everything that's a trouble for people, like the greens and the shapes of the foliage, trees. So many tough elements that are just not as easy to paint. So let me try and be a little more accurate with my details here. Trying to keep these patterns random and not so much patterns. Uh, a bit of blue down below, maybe like this. So this, these trees look a little warmer, but that's too much. Let's go back to some green. See, I'm really trying to find my middle ground, and I fail. Mm -hmm. Fail significantly. So now I have this kind of blank shape. I'm gonna go back with some darks and indicate the shadows, thus indicating the 
branches and leaves and things like that. I'm, I'm starting to lose a bit of patience, so I know that. You'll have to forgive me. I'm kind of going faster here, uh, but that's fine. Definitely not my kind of trees, but that's okay. Yeah, and I can definitely go darker on the background. So we'll do that. Yep, we're good. So let's give these a few more seconds to dry. I'm so tired. Um, and then here's what we're gonna do. So once these dry a little better, I'll work my way from top to bottom, doing another layer of the same May green, but then combining it with a bit of a brown here by adding some red to some sections, because you see there's a lot of brownness here that I didn't get. And everything needs to be a little darker. Now, it probably feels like things need to be darker because I added those um, very dark trees. But I think it's still a little lighter. This is lighter. And you know what? I can start bringing up some single trees. Let's add a few. Or you know what? No. No, first I want to go over with another wash because then it will reawaken the trees. So let me go back to this green and start top to bottom. Should I do it with a bit of blue? Nah. No, we'll keep it like that. So let's start here at the top and see what happens. A bit of a risk, right? But uh, I don't think we have too much to lose here, actually, so that's fine. So darkening it up a bit. I hope it'll fall in the right context that way. A little tired of painting just the obvious scenes, so yeah. And we'll get rid of the green gaps while we're at it. And then as we get to the center, I'm going to add a bit of that red, a bit of that more yellowy mix. More neutral. I'm going to really have to go over the trees again. And we have to avoid the road here. Close off these gaps. Yeah, so that's a bit better, I think. This I don't like, but that's fine. Maybe I can just pour a little water in there. Maybe we can take that, do the worst thing possible, just to lighten it up. Use the technique that is the most destructive. <laughs> but that's fine. Good. We'll live with that. We will live with that. Uh, so let's see. Maybe when we look at these two from really afar, it'll look similar. Uh, so let's see what you're saying in the chat, and then I'll bring out... Or maybe I should already do that. Let's... Hmm. But you see, it's it's dark enough, so I don't want to go again over it. Let's just bring out some individual trees and see what happens. Ah, uh, this painting is a mess. I think I'll stop soon. Let me do this. Let me clean this well. I'm cleaning the well. Live. It's the first time I'm caught on camera cleaning a well. Well, not really the first time, but I barely do it off camera too, so it's a rare moment. Let's see here. And I even cleaned my water bucket, by the way, which I don't always do. There we go. There we go. Hmm. So let me try this. Let's take a bit of that Payne's Gray and add to that a bit of Thalo Blue. Thalo Green, sorry. Does that feel like something that could work? Maybe. Let me try it out. Especially here. It just feels like I lost the value. Hmm. Now it's a struggle to stay patient. <laughs> really, it is. Mm, but yeah, that's fine. We're gonna we're gonna finish this painting. 
We're going to finish it like heroes. As they often say in Hebrew. It sounds better in Hebrew, I think. Uh, but yeah. And if it's going to be a complete mess up, that's fine. Notice something interesting, just to talk a bit about shapes. The edge of the shape I am trying to show a bit of, like, trees. But the middle of the shape, not so much. I'm just kind of painting it as a shape. It's very easy to kind of go a little too much in the middle and start drawing the trees like that. And then you won't get anywhere, so just cover it all up, you know. That's what I find works well for me. And you see now it's a little too dark in my opinion, so I don't know. I don't know if there's hope, but we'll try. And we'll add a few single trees while we're at it. Like that. This is really a mess. Should have simplified the entire thing, but yeah, that's fine. Could be interesting to try and maybe pick this one up maybe in a few weeks and try and improve it with opaque paint. <laughs> Probably that's gonna be the only way to do that. Uh, but yeah, a bit of ultramarine, a bit of water. This I want to leave kind of blended, so let's not touch that. We have a bit of trees here, a group of them. I have a bubble on my brush. That only happens when I'm really sloppy. Yeah, these shouldn't be as dark, so I'm just going to drop in a few hints or you know, shadows, something like that. This I don't want to touch. I think I'll stop the process. <laughs> I don't feel like I don't feel like finishing it. I think what I'll do is stop it, answer any questions. I'll keep it on the back burner, do a bit of a comparison, take a picture, look at it black and white together, and I'll try and figure out how I could have painted it better. Maybe I'll do another version. It could be interesting. I don't know. Spraying all over it. So I actually like this. I can cut out all of that and just keep this as a painting and I'm good and happy. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. This blue really eludes me. I don't really... I don't get it. Let me try something. By trying I mean observing and looking at a photo. We're gonna have to do another iteration on it. I'll do another version of it in my own free time and we'll see how it goes. I don't... I don't... I don't like this. It's very rare that I really dislike something that I feel like I need to change everything. But that day has to arrive at some point. And it's this now, so yeah. It's just the trees are too dark. Not clear enough. The mountains in the back are really good, actually. They're very close to the color and value. It's so interesting. Because that's the, the thing that usually gives me more trouble. <laughs> but it's actually like this section looks really on point. Really interesting. And I'm thinking if there's a like a creative solution for for lightening everything up. So let, let's try something interesting here. I'm not I'm not even gonna think about fixing like turning this one around. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make a learning experience out of this. So the trees are way too dark, and you can see it very easily just by comparing the two. While trying to find the right color and trying to find the right balance, I went way too dark. So I'll let it fully dry, I'll even use a hair dryer, and I'll attempt to see if I can hit the right value, and even color possibly, by mixing a bit of opaque white paint. Because it's something I'm gonna show more of in the future, I've been playing around with it. It's just a way of making the color more milky, in a way, and, and lighter, and opaque. So it could be an interesting experiment. So let's do that, let's turn this into a bit of an experiment in that way. I'm gonna just dry this real fast. And we'll do it here and there. I'm not going to paint over everything, just to see if we can bring back some of these. Okay, let me dry this for a few seconds. We'll be right back. 
so I think I did something wrong. Instead of muting, I played around with the volume. For a second. Okay, so let me know if, if I sound okay. I think I lowered the volume and I don't remember what it was before. So sorry if I sound on screen. Let me mute this, you let me know in the comments. Yeah, your comments make me laugh. It's so funny. <laughs> Wait a second. Melanie Leroy, if this is the best of my paintings, I don't like, must be a dumpster fire. It's funny. Yeah, so let me show you. I, I know you want to see that color isolated. I'm going to try. Um, let's bring another piece of paper. Which, of course, I don't have a good one handy. But we'll try it. Maybe I'll use one of my sketchbooks. Let's see what I have here. Good. So, the color itself. I'm going to open up Photoshop and we'll, we'll just do a few of these kind of experiments. It's really close in some places. It's so funny. It's, it's close here in terms of values. interesting let me try we'll see so I'm gonna open it up open the picture and let's let's do this so the the trees I'm gonna sample the color once again then let's open up like a white canvas <clears throat> let's learn from this this is something I barely do on my own so I think it's a good yeah so it's a cool green it's a cool blue I'm going to try and mix that and we'll see how it goes. So, color of those trees. What is it? What does it look like isolated? We've got the answer here. So let's see if it's similar to that. A bit, but not exactly. So, a bit more ultramarine. So it's really close to that, actually. For the value to, at least at this moment. Once it dries, it may need some more strength. So let's let's see once again. Um, this is really close. So that'll be it. Now what I have here, it's a bit hard to see, but it's actually much darker. See, much darker and, and the green takes over way too much. But the value is a big problem here. The color is actually quite similar. Let me paint all the way to the edge. It's gonna be a little hard to see, but if you compare these two. Let me see how you see it. Good. It should be lighter, actually. That's the main problem. The color was close enough. Um, this won't, you see, it doesn't show very well here, um, but it's actually quite close. I know it looks like it needs more green in it. Um, I don't think it needs that. I think it's due to the camera because I'm looking at it. It looks exactly the same as what I have in Photoshop right now. Uh, but let's try adding a bit of green and see if it brings it closer on the screen itself, at least. So this is with a bit more green. I don't really like this paper, but... See, that's really similar. Um, but I think that's due to the camera. But now it looks a little closer, right? So I think that's close. Now, as for the green, it should probably be lighter, much lighter too, I went too dark. So if I have the green next to it, kind of like that, And then the green is actually much more neutral in many places. So we will add a bit of that red too. Just trying to figure out like what's the ratio between these two. See, that looks a little closer to 
to the greens inside there. See? Now what I did here, I just feel like folding it. Let me fold it. There isn't really anything that important on the other side. See if you compare the two. Should be much lighter. Probably less green too. So it is a lot about the value. Now let me take a picture of the painting itself. Um, I want to try something. Let me switch over here to my face. Like that. Good. I'll take a picture. We'll turn it black and white. And we'll kind of play around with it. Okay. Just want to, while this is fresh in my mind too, figure out what we can do uh, to improve it. And then we'll move towards wrapping it up. So, just a second, it's going to look a little different because again, I took a picture with the phone, uh, but let's see here. You see the connection is a little slower, so forgive me if there's any issue. And here we go. This is the painting. I'm just going to edit it real fast in Photoshop, and when I mean edit, I'm just going to crop out. There we go. Um, anything around it so that I can correct the colors. And then we'll do a side by side uh, black and white. Because I want to take a look at the values for a second here. So this goes like that. Good. It's very interesting actually. I'm gonna save two versions in color painting color and then um, mm, save as JPEG painting black light. Good. Good, 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 good. Now let's bring it over here. I want to compare it. Okay. Too many clicks just to get a picture there. Um, yeah, there we go. So this is the painting uh, as I took a picture of it with my phone. And we're gonna do a little side by side with the black and white version of the reference photo. And we'll try and analyze my mistakes. So this is it. And we need this, right? Let's actually make these two larger. So obviously the trees are way too dark in the foreground. That's like you see it immediately. The background's actually decent. It's not the end of the world. The values are okay. But the trees in the foreground are way too dark. Yeah, you were right. Um, I think Kelvin wrote it. Who wrote it? Um, yeah, trees weird. Yeah, it's definitely too dark. The question is, do I start scrubbing it now and just making it much um, much lighter and trying to get it closer? Or do I just kind of let it go? Besides that, that background also is, like this should be darker, you see? This area here, it's not, not close. So it's, the value isn't that bad, actually. The shapes could be better. <laughs> I was a little lazy drawing them, probably. The background, like, this mountain looks the same. It's so good, I like that. I mean, of course, not the same, but kind of similar. Why am I obstructing my face? There we go. Yeah, so it's interesting. I was close, but also kind of sloppy with a lot of shapes. Uh, this here is way too dark, you see? This green here. Uh, you can't see, of course. <laughs> Let me move this. This here. Too dark. See the difference? Too dark here should be lighter and of course the trees are way too dark I'm not gonna correct it I'm not gonna fix it I think just seeing it like that is enough um, I will probably fix it do another version of it and, and hope for the best uh, and see if I can get it to look a little closer it's, it's very challenging actually I think uh, for me personally I knew it it's gonna be a challenging painting but yeah took a bit of a risk so let's see what you're saying and then we'll start <laughs> concluding <laughs> Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Kanchan. Thank you. Um, let's see here. Artistic license. 
Yeah, so I like artistic license, but sometimes I just want to get it to look the way I want it to. Uh, let's move this back here. Let's see if I can find a spot to open everything up together. We'll put this here small. Hey, Hudson, the primitiveness of experimentation is the best part of the journey. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You can then show improvement too. Monica, thank you so much. Random Peacock. Hey, Leron, really li uh, like your videos. Uh, it's how I got into watercolor. Wow, thank you so much. That's so cool to hear. Uh, Johannes, hi, Leron. Hope you're well missed most part. Yeah, sorry. It, it's You didn't miss too much. It was a bit uh, of a weird process. Thank you, Melanie. Uh, I used to paint every tree. <laughs> yeah, Calvin, that, that's a big problem. You know. Happy that you you found a way to move beyond that. Uh, it's really fun when you understand that the overall shape matters more. Which, by the way, I got a lot of it wrong here too. Um, and the edges kind of hint at the texture or the material. Uh, thank you so much, John, considering the crazy week you've had. I feel I think you've been great. Thank you, thank you so so much. So hard to recover once you get too dark. Definitely, Megan. We can actually try and recover, but again, the difference isn't too str like only here it's a little too dark. Honestly, you can just pour some water on it and lift. Just go like this. I don't care anymore. I'm just gonna do it, you know? And then you kind of go like this, grab a bit of tissue, get a bit of a funky texture, but it is lighter, see? So yeah. But yeah, it's not easy. I, I said we'll play around with opaque over it, but actually it's, it's close enough. So do you want us to try doing opaque white over the trees we can do that too um water drops see on the photo there are some brownish under the trees yeah definitely uh, ralph i missed that um da, 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 we read that oh there's a lot of messages um let's see if there's anything particularly interesting thank you dragonfly art cafe much appreciated uh no more sound yeah sorry i i kind of dropped it myself my bad uh hi from seal thank you sunshine for being here uh, seeing it side by side definitely helps, yeah. Uh, I like using yellow ochre light in the background cover and then bring ochre gold in the foreground. Interesting. Interesting. I'll give it a try. Nora says, thanks, Liron. I have to go. Thank you so much for being here. Um, yeah. Should leave the trees. Yeah, I'll leave the trees. I don't touch them. Dabs of lighter green on the background trees. Yeah, I, I won't touch the... I won't touch the background. Agree. The front trees look darker than the background trees in the colored version, but they are in the same value. Yeah, yeah, that's that's how it is. That's how it works, Calvin. It's so bizarre with the green sometimes. First time watching your live stream, hey! Thank you so much, Martyr. <laughs> I've been enjoying your tutorials. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Gail, could you lift some paint from the most dark shadows in the foreground trees? Yeah, and hopefully you've seen this uh, right here. It's not the most graceful, um, but it is possible. If you if there's a section that's particularly too dark. You can do that. You just have to be a little careful. Put a bit of water on it. Come back with a slightly uh, dry brush. And then kind of lighten it up a bit. You see, it does create an uneven texture. Now, you could glaze on top of it some white. Let's try to do that for one of the trees. So, if I use a bit of my uh, opaque white here, let's add it actually to... Um, We'll go with a bit of a brownish kind of... Because some people don't know that you can just mix opaque paint into other colors. So, if I do this and I kind of go over it, will it lighten it up? Not enough. So let's add more white. That's really not enough. You can see you can lift back the value like this. Now, it will dry a little differently and unevenly. That's the... That's the thing with the watercolor, they're not really meant to be painted too opaquely. That's too light. Um, so it won't last that well. And it's very hard to gauge just how much opaque paint to put to, to, to lighten it in the right way and in the right amount, actually. It's not, not that easy. Um, but just as an experiment, we can do that and kind of compare later on, see? Getting it maybe closer i know it looks a little lighter now but it's gonna dry darker funny enough because the the paint is gonna be absorbed and evaporate the water is gonna evaporate so let's see actually once this dries if it got a little closer to the background but yeah i'm not i'm not attempting to fix this one 
there will be no fixing here, just kind of experimentation. Let me dry this real fast and see how it dries, actually, I'm curious. So it's actually quite close in a way, but I don't think if I look at it black and white, let me just look for a second. I don't think it's that much better. Now, how do I play around? Okay, I'll just take a picture. One sec. I just want to check this out and that, then we'll move into wrapping it up, I think. I think it is time to wrap it up. Uh, I have a really fun video for Saturday, you're going to see. Um, I'll talk about something cool, you'll see. Okay. So, if you look at the photo here after editing it, you see it's, it's a little closer, a little lighter. I know it's a bad side-by-side, -side, but you get the point. It's a little closer to this now than it is to that, right? Hopefully you see it. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. This section I like. So find always find something to like about the painting. This section right here, if I could ignore the rest, I can just cut it out here and turn it into a really extreme uh, dimensioned painting. So yeah, yeah I don't know. It's, it, it was fun actually. Now that we're done with it, I think it was fu more fun than I, than I felt like while suffering through the process. But yeah, you get to see me struggle a bit. Probably the next painting video we'll do, I'll have like a clear high contrast subject where you can really see the lights and darks and everything. Uh, just to have a bit of a rest from, from the, you know, challenge. Uh, Marty or Hailer, oh yeah, I read that one, sorry. Uh, I just realized there's a Discord. Yeah, Melanie, join in. Uh, Beverly says you learn uh, even through mistakes. Uh, yeah, just to go back to the Discord. Yeah, it's really fun. I try to be as active, but the last couple of days, of course, I've been a little less active, but I am trying to like, I follow people on Instagram there. Uh, we talk a lot um, um, about watercolor, drawing. Drawing could use more activity. Some people are really active in the drawing. Um, what do you call it? Channel. Um, I should definitely post more there. Uh, um. Ian says scrape into uh, the wet paint to add texture. Like to actually scrape into it. I'm so bad at this technique. Maybe maybe I'll try it out off camera. Uh, definitely learn through uh, mistakes. Uh, a Hudson feel better. Get some well deserved rest. Yeah, mostly uh, mostly for my leg. <laughs> I think I have. I may have a not a sprained ankle, but a, what do you call it? A stress stress fracture, I think. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, Ruthie, I understood. Yeah, not Ruby. Uh, John, thank you so, so much. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions after the fact, just drop them in a comment. Uh, I'll try and answer them. It's, it's funny, it's like some things on this painting are on point, but the shapes are all different and, the, and there is no grace, like no real grace in it, uh, I think. A lot of things could be improved. The one thing I am happy with is the overall composition. I think changing the mountains to, to look the way they look is was a good idea, actually. Um, yeah, and you could say, yeah, make the foreground darker to separate it from the background, but then I darkened the ground too, you know, and I haven't. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think we'll wrap it up. I think we'll wrap it up. Let me know again in, in a comment if you have any questions, I'll definitely uh, answer there. And yeah, what else did I wanna? I want to mention anything else. No, I think that's it. So you take care. <laughs> have, a, have a fun weekend. Um, all the all the good blessings. Relax if you can. I will definitely be relaxing. I think. Uh, and yeah, keep painting. Keep practicing. I will talk to you again soon.